Hello, and thanks for joining us today. We've got a really interesting case, a aberrant right subclavian artery and obstructed left jugular vein in a Fontan. So uh, aberrant right subclavian artery may become obstructed with, during TEE. It travels behind the esophagus. So uh, when you insert the probe, uh, the right arm loses uh, blood flow. Um, multiple cerebral infections can result in jugular vein obstruction and as well as placement of um, intracranial shunts. And a high frequency probe is required to image this pathology even in adults. So here's our patient with tricuspid atresia and uh, we can see the basement membrane here, the mitral valve, uh, the remnant of the right ventricle. Uh, we can see that where the surgeon has created a com communication between the left and right uh, atrium. And uh, so something a little flipping around in here. And here is the artificial conduit that connects the inferior vena cava directly to the right uh, pulmonary artery. And this is important in a Fontan. They tend to... Uh, grow blood vessels and are notorious for having lots of strange uh, blood vessels and we're going to see that today. So here is a, a normal with an adult probe. This is our arch sidedness view. Uh, we have to do this in every patient. We can see the innominate artery goes off towards the right shoulder uh, and this tells me that this is a normal left aortic arch the innominate artery went off this way, it would be a right aortic arch. So let's change to a high frequency probe and see what the uh, difference is. Quite a difference here. So now we can see the aorta, the innominate artery, the right carotid, and the right subclavian all together. Interesting little comet tails are probably getting from the subclavian bone. So quite a difference with a high frequency probe and I do this on all my patients. I wanna check the wall thickness uh, for Takayasu's arteritis and uh, again, check to see that the right subclavian does originate from the innominant artery. So color Doppler is really helpful in uh, showing how the uh, blood flows here and helps us to better see the uh, bifurcation uh, just confirming that uh, the right subclavian artery is present. So here we see the innominate artery and it's an absent uh, bifurcation. There's a little stump here where uh, the bifurcation should be. So in this patient, the uh, right subclavian goes off the aorta, around behind the esophagus, and then ends up well, where does it end up? Let's see. So here we can see the right subclavian running parallel to the innominate artery. It has to get to the right arm somehow. Uh, and the, this is the abnormal course. And again, this can become, this blood flow can be completely obstructed during transesophageal echocardiography. So we're looking at a, in a modified aortic arch view. I've tilted the probe to show the longest segment possible of the left common carotid. So it's a regular aortic arch view, just tilting the probe to show the longest segment uh, possible. So here's our right subclavian artery coming off the uh, aortic arch. And again, the left common carotid. So uh, color Doppler helps to identify this artery a little bit better. Again, left common carotid. And here is our right subclavian artery as it's going to go on and wrap around the esophagus and then follow underneath the, uh, uh, the right uh, subclavian, the right uh, innominate artery. So I carefully inspected the uh, left common carotid and uh, 
the aberrant uh, right subclavian artery, but I couldn't find the left jugular vein. Uh, there was no blood flow through it. It was completely collapsed, but it was also pretty much invisible. And that is what the uh, Fontans are notorious for. Uh, this is what they are notorious for. Uh, they're very good at creating these collateral uh, blood vessels. You can see there's blood coming up and coming down. So it's a very complicated pathway. Um, the right jugular vein is uh, uh, prominent. It seems like it's a little bigger on, on this side. Uh, it's probably carrying more blood flow. But this is enough to keep the face from swelling up. And uh, our patient is asymptomatic and he's doing well. So we're required to show arch-sidedness. So let's do a good job. Let's check those blood, ves blood vessels and make sure uh, that they're present. So please don't assume that a blood vessel uh, is present or that it's patent. Thanks, guys.